We want to welcome you to the Rings Creek Worship Center video for this week of April the 26th, 2020. I have a scripture for you this morning. A good way to start your day. It's Psalm 100 that says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. That's a good psalm to live your life by. <clears throat> Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. That's what we should always be doing. Praise the Lord for that. We are so glad that you're here with us today. And our pastor, Emmanuel Allen, will be with us here in just a moment to present the morning message for today. But let's bow our heads for a word of prayer before we start. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much because you are concerned about every one of us. We serve a living God. We serve a God who cares, a God that wants the very best for each one of us. And we thank you for the privilege of knowing who you are and to be your children. We ask that you would minister to each one that views this video today, that you would open their hearts, their minds, their understanding, that you might be able to touch their hearts with the word in a way they've never understood it before. Yeah. May your will be known to them, and may they give their hearts and their lives completely over to you 100% and allow you to be Lord of their lives. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Pastor Allen. <clears throat> God bless you, Brother Dale. <laughs> praise the Lord, it's good to be here again to... Actually, we're just here to worship God Amen. today and give him praise and honor and glory. That's what it's all about. Amen. Uh, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Today, I'm going to preach from Matthew 6, and it's about prayer it's about it's several different subjects in that. Uh, doing your alms for the Lord. It says, when you do them, do them not to be seen by men. But if you do what you do in secret for God, whether it's giving alms, if it's fasting, Whatever you're doing, if you do that in secret, the Bible says he'll reward us openly. Amen. And uh, it teaches, Jesus teaches us, this is what I'm preaching is the word of our Lord and Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. He teaches us how to pray. And he says not to use vain repetitions, mm -hmm. not to repeat things over and over and over. And he teaches us long prayers do not help any. That don't mean not to pray, not to be consistent in prayer, because there's a lot to pray about in this day and time. There's Amen. a lot to pray. And every time that we become conscious that we're not praying, we need to start praying. Amen. You know, I need a lot of prayer myself. But the main thing is, I want my mind to run on Jesus Christ. Yes. And I want him to be the one that's in control of my thoughts, what Amen. I'm thinking. That, that's where 
the joy of salvation. But the Bible says that our cup runneth over. And you know, I've really found that to be true in my Christian walk of life. Amen. Today, as I was thinking on this message, and I've been thinking about it, the Lord's been speaking to me about it all week. And uh, one night I went to bed just really preaching the Word of God. But there's one thing that I mention a lot here, and I do it because I want to glorify God. The day that I was saved, the day that I walked down this aisle, you know, about a week ago, they buried the pastor that was pastoring here when I got saved. I was thinking about that today and God started speaking to me about the man that came to visit me, came on visitation. And I I was building a patio deck the day he came. And I stopped working and sat down and visited with him. That was Brother Alan Casey. And uh, I don't know if Brother Allen ever listens to these or not, but I, I thank God because he listened to God that day. And he come up there and he talked to me and I believe that Brother Allen thought I'm going to go see him one more time. <laughs> and because so many times I've been down here, got down on my knees, and went off and didn't live for the Lord. But the day I come to this altar, I had made a decision that I was going to live for the Lord. Amen. And I was going to preach the gospel of Christ, Brother Dale. And Amen. I know that my wife has spoke to you about it many a time, yes. how she prayed for me. Amen. And I, I thank God for that. Amen. And that's the reason I said that, <clears throat> praying, we've got to have faith. And she never lost faith. I mean, every place she went, she asked prayers for me <laughs> that I'd get saved. She never lost faith. Amen. And faith is the way that we get our prayers answered. Now, I'm going to get on the end to this today starting at the sixth verse. It says, But when you pray, use not vain repetitions, for as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Uh, you know, I thought of this as God was speaking to me on this for a long time. I I never considered what this verse really meant here. Uh, many a time when I get down to pray, especially at home in my closet, I would get lost in prayer in the spirit of God. And I, you know, I know that when you're praying in the spirit, you're not using vain repetitions at that time. I have prayed and the glory of God come down and time would pass. They'd be three or four hours that would pass that uh, I didn't know where the time went to. And uh, I, I'm saying all that to say we need to study the word of God and know what the Word of God says about everything that we do, every walk that we're walking in this Christian life. We need to know that we're doing it as God would want us to do it. You know, it says 
that uh, God knows our needs before we ask. Yes, he does. But he wants us to ask. He wants us to be like little children. You know, Amen. little children don't hesitate to ask for what they want Amen. or what they need. But if we get so caught up in God that our desires are to see God's will done, not our will done. Uh, he's been dealing with me about the fields being ripe and the, the fields being white and the harvest is so great. Amen. The fields are white, uh, white, he said, and we've got work to do, work Amen. needs to be done so much that needs to be done but Jesus said oh he said the workers are so few yeah. and today I, I, I want to preach this to where the convicting power will reach out today I'm preaching to Christian people the last time I preached I was preaching to sinners. But today, we have got a great responsibility on our shoulders for the things that's going on in the world, this coronavirus and all of that. I mean, there's people that is in need, great need today. They need people to pray. I mean, there's people, people that uh, are just so sick. Uh, one of them was my daughter last Sunday. I mean, the way she told, she felt like that her life was leaving her body. She was so sick. And uh, I'm not going to go on with that, but anyway, today she's much better. And I Amen. thank the Lord for that. Amen. But uh, this says, After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father. Oh, we need to let him know that we know who he is. Our Father. I've got a Father. I may not have an earthly Father, but I've got a spiritual father yes, amen. that's in heaven brother Dale amen. Jesus Christ I mean I may go through this and uh, I may get ahead of myself a lot of times but I want to tell you something Jesus Christ told us how that God could become our father Yes. He said you must be born again. Amen. Uh, unless you're born again, uh, you might as well to forget about these prayers being answered except that you pray the sinner's prayer. But Jesus said you must be born again. That's what he told Nicodemus. She must be born again. And after that you're born again, uh, I feel the Spirit of God so strong in this place now. After that you're born again, that puts you in the family of God. Amen. God is your Father. Uh, Jesus Christ is your Savior. Uh, but more than that, he's your elder brother. He said uh, that you're no longer my servant, but you're my friend. Amen. If uh, your relationship with him gets right and he is your friend yes. and he said uh, my friends know what I know Amen. and, and uh, the friends of, of Jesus I'm telling you that uh, we're heirs with the father with, Je with God the father and we're joint heirs with Jesus Christ Amen and it's in this what I'm going to preach on today that you can learn how to get your prayers answered. There we go. We're not supposed to just 
pray a prayer, but we're supposed to pray the prayer of faith, Brother Dale. <laughs> That's what counts, uh, uh, praying unless it's a prayer of faith, unless we believe what we're praying in, uh, we're praying in vain because it won't be answered. But the secret of it all is believing. Amen. There is nothing too great for God to do. Amen. God is the creator. He's the creator that created the spirit that lives within me, the soul that lives within you, and the body that we all live in. God the Father, he created us in a Trinity manner. The Godhead is Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Amen. And every one of them is our God today. We've got the Spirit of God that dwells within us. Amen. That is actually our knowledge that teaches us the things of God. I mean, uh, that should be shouting ground uh, for us to uh, live on and live in Amen. and Him live in with us and, yes. and, and Him in us and us in Him. That makes us complete, says it makes our joy complete. Amen. And I mean, this message is so long, I probably won't get very far with it again today. <laughs> but it says, uh, After this manner, pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. How many of us take time to hallow his name before we start naming off things that we come to him to pray about? That's right. It says, Jesus said, this is the way to approach the throne of grace. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Don't tell me this is under the law uh, because it's not. Jesus came to this earth uh, for one reason. He came here uh, because God the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son uh, that we could enter into this new covenant, the new covenant that we live in today, uh, that uh, Jesus Christ is our high priest. Yes, he is. We don't need anybody to go to God for us. No. We can ask people to pray for us, uh, but you've got the same connection with God that I've got. Amen. Direct connection Amen. through Jesus Christ, Praise our Lord. Lord and Savior. Amen. Praise God. Amen. It says, uh, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. <coughs> Excuse me. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now I want to get into some of the things after this. Why that God is leading me to preach this message today. If you want to get right with God, and you're serious about it, Jesus is telling us how to do it here. Yes. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. <laughs> and any Christian that's listening to me that, uh, today, if you say, well, I can forgive, but I can't forgive, that's not the way that you approach the kingdom of heaven because Amen. the only way to worship God is in spirit and in truth Amen. and God knows how it is that you're coming to him and I'm telling you today 
that you've got to lay aside all these things. The Bible says the weighty matters. The weighty matters that doth so easily beset us. John the Baptist said, I must decrease that he can increase. Yes. There's nothing as important in me as Jesus Christ is. And I'm going to get around to the world, to turning loose of the world before I quit preaching today. I hope if it don't take too long. Yeah, because that's important. Oh, if we do like Jesus taught us here, we will learn how to put our faith and our trust in the Godhead that we serve and we won't take no thought of tomorrow. That's what Jesus said not to do. Don't take any thought of tomorrow. I, I can remember back through my lifetime it looked impossible sometimes to be able to make ends meet, so to speak. But through it all, uh, especially since I've, since I've been uh, preaching, through it all, somehow and some way, by the miracles that God performed that I could not see coming, through that, I made it through so many. I mean, it's not just one trial, one tribulation that I've been through, but and when you go through one, you're going to go through another one. And because uh, uh, we've got an enemy out there, his purpose is to defeat us. Yes, uh, but yes. God's purpose in it all is to place trust and for us to have faith uh, and believe that he Amen. is. Oh, he told Moses, he said, uh, when they ask you who sent you, say the I am, yes. the great I am. Yes. That's the one that sent, uh, uh, sent you. And I want to tell you something today, all the preachers out there uh, that's listening, uh, when you go, you need to say, if you're truly called uh, by uh, our Heavenly uh, Father, if you're truly called, you need to let people know who it is that sent you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can do that in so many ways. Uh, uh, you don't have to be boastful about yourself. Uh, Jesus said that you're the light of the world. Amen. And he said uh, that a city set on a hill, uh, that's a great light. Do you know what that's putting every uh, Christian person actually? That uh, you're like a city that's set on a hillside? I mean, if you really turn loose, let go, and let God have his way, in your life that you can be like a city that you don't have to be boastful you don't have to brag but uh, uh, people can look at you and they can feel the spirit in you and they can see what's going on in your life and uh, they can know and realize like uh, yes. uh, uh, Peter and John when they went into the temple and the lame man was sitting there and he he needed something that uh, anyway the people said I mean he needed healing I don't want to pass that up he needed healing and they had the power of God within them to heal that man and people then after that said uh, that they was ignorant man men but uh, you could see that they've been with Jesus. Uh, yes, and let amen. me tell you something. Amen. It's still that way today. It's still that way. Uh, you can uh, live a life. Uh, it don't matter who you are, how educated you are, or how educated you're not, how rich you are, or how poor you are. Uh, you've got this same option that you can uh, sell out to God. 
and that uh, uh, God can get a hold of your life and uh, people can see that you've been with God. Amen. Amen. That makes a difference. It Amen. makes a change. And then if you take enough time uh, to read the Word of God and you begin to let uh, uh, the Spirit of God uh, manifest itself in you and He begins to speak to you of the true meaning of, of what He meant when He said that ye shall worship God in a spirit and in truth. Uh, there's a spirit that comes into you uh, that will reveal all truth unto you. Amen. Our God is so good. <laughs> He's so great. Hallelujah. He's got every answer that this old world needs. Yes, I mean, it could does. be uh, cleansed and healed uh, within just a instant in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. It could be cleansed that quick if the world would turn back to God. But the Bible says that it's not going to do that. And especially in our day and time, it speaks of this as being the evil days. And it says, uh, fail not to assemble yourselves together. And I know that the devil has uh, tricked the world, it looks like. But one of these days, because we can't assemble ourselves together like we was just a couple of months ago, but one of these days, uh, uh, you watch and see what's going to take place. God is going to be victorious uh, over this. And I believe there's going to be a revival that's going to Amen. sweep across the United States Amen. of America. Amen. And we're going to see things change in this Amen. world. Change and be different than Amen. they have been in a long, long time now. Amen. Uh, I'm old enough that I remember World War II. People sought God, and I'm telling you what, in the churches, the uh, Baptist churches, Pentecost churches, Nazarene, uh, whatever it might be, there was people that was swayed in the Spirit of God. <laughs> and I'm looking for that to take place. Amen. I'm not saying that it don't take place in this day and time uh, because I know all the miracles that the Bible talks about, even the raising of the dead. And I'm a, a Christian that believes in the raising of the dead. Amen. If God sees fit to do so, and if we step out on faith, I've seen God uh, raise people that was on their deathbed uh, uh, several times since I've been preaching. And to God be the glory Amen. because... He's the only one that can do that. But I believe that it's still going on in parts of the world uh, today that uh, God has been manifested in a lot of parts of the world uh, more than what he is in the United States of America. And uh, you know, we've become a nation that's almost like a nation of infidels because uh, uh, we got to the place to work and uh, we were self-righteous people. Uh, the Bible says there's more hopes uh, uh, for an infidel than there is for a uh, self-righteous man. Uh, let me tell you something, that's a, a bad place to get into uh, to work. There's more hope for an infidel than there is for you. That's right. I want to avoid that. Amen. If I don't get on into this, I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to have to leave out a lot of parts, of important parts of this scripture. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will uh, also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will the uh, will your Father forgive you your trespasses. That you need to examine that in your heart and see how it stands. See how you stand. Moreover, when you fight, be not as the hypocrites of a sad accountants, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fight. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You know that 
two is probably what knocks a lot of prayer because we're dependent on what we look like, what we sound like, but it's not that. It's a faith that we put Amen. into our Lord and Savior as Jesus Christ. That, that fasting is a good thing, I believe, because it brings you under subjection to God. I mean, it makes you obedient and humble before Him. But we don't do that to be shown off that men can see what we're doing. And we need to keep it quiet if we fast. And it says, But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in, uh, which is in secret, and thy Father which saith in secret uh, shall reward thee openly. I'm going to go back and read that over. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which saith in secret shall reward thee openly. And I, I want to move on off that, get down in the next uh, subject here, it kingdom, kingdom law of riches. All this is where people have problems of trusting God and uh, to say, Lord, you can have it all. <laughs> I won't be yours. When, uh, when uh, God <laughs> Save me, I've done that. I said, God, you can have everything I got. I want you, I want you to be satisfied with me. And I want you, I want to be able to glorify you. Not for my glory, but for the glory of God. For the what I can do for the kingdom of God. It says, lay. Lay not up for yourself treasures up on earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. You know, and I could stop there and say a lot about this virus and what it's done to the stock market, even what it's doing to the slaughterhouses and what it's doing to the oil companies. Uh, almost every area of business and government and private lives are affected by this coronavirus. You know what? Not been affected. Not Amen. one bit Amen. yet by this Amen. coronavirus. That's right. Actually, God may have got some glory out of it. Who knows how many ministers have went in and prayed for people on their deathbed and seen a miracle. Do you think that they'd be on Fox News or any of the other uh, broadcasting, TV broadcasting stations? They'd keep that secret because they wouldn't want people to know that someone walked in like Peter and John and spoke a word of healing and that person got up and walked out of the hospital completely and totally healed. It's not fanatical. I believe that today. Amen. I believe that God is still uh, doing things like that today. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Uh, everything that we've got in heaven is safe and sound. Uh, uh, they can't affect a computer up there because they don't work like these do here <laughs> on earth. They can't steal anything out of your bank account or off your credit card because God, as Brother Dale spoke about the umbrella last week, God has got an umbrella effect over us. Yes, he does. Uh, 
we can abide under the shadow of the Almighty, Amen. the Bible says. Amen. And that's where I want to be. Oh, I found a friend in Jesus, <laughs> and he's everything to me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, I think I've got 22. I'll read 21 just in case. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Yeah, I hadn't read that. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. God really gave me a revelation on this as not as I was reading the scripture, but as I was laying on the bed of preaching on what he'd already given me. I mean, you just think it says, but if your eye's not single and just a little bit of darkness is in your body, think of this, all Christian people that's listening to me, think what a little bit of sin that you look at that gets between you and God. Amen. What great dark, darkness that causes between you and him, but not just because of you and him, but between you and him, but it gets in the way of your walk of life with people around you. I mean, a few weeks ago I was speaking of dreams that I've had smoking, drinking, and my neighbors look at me and say, I thought you was part of that church down there. What a letdown that was in that dream. To dream something like that. And them centered people correct me or let me know how they looked at me through their eyes. We need to study to show ourselves the proof a workman before God that needeth not be ashamed. And if we don't watch, it's awful easy for us to step off track, so to speak, and do things, say things, show things in our life that is not Christian, but like a city that sits on a hill, a Christian is supposed to be like that, reflecting the light of God, reflecting the light of God that reflects through our light, through love, I believe love first of all, but through truth. He said the only way to worship him is in spirit and in truth. And I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm getting ready to close here in a minute. And the devil's fought me all the way through this, through my throat and through trying to interrupt my thoughts. And, but he, he's not the one that's victorious Amen. in my life. That's Jesus right. Christ is Amen. the one that's victorious in my life. Um, but if thine eye be full of evil, thy whole body, uh, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. And it lets you know there that the eye, that is where that enters in that. Our eye is a, a vessel that we've got in our body, one of our members, that we either work and honor God through that, or we fail him and let the darkness of old Satan enter in through that. If you're a Christian and you sit and watch TV very long, you can see that the devil is the prince of the air. And through the commercials and all the other junk that's put on there that's to 
build up lust in our eyes to help us to see things that are not godly and if they're if they're not godly then they're of Satan and the things that we can get caught up in <coughs> can really hinder our walk with Jesus. I'm not saying you're in a backslidden condition. He said if you forgive men, God will forgive your trespasses. So, I mean, all this needs to be took into consideration. Amen. No man can serve two ma masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And that's very, very, very true. Um, our own selves is what we want to serve so much. With uh, Most of the time, bad to say, I'm sorry to say, but we put ourselves before God because we're thinking what we want not dwelling on God what is it that you want and today I'm preaching to Christian people and not to be putting anybody down but I'm preaching because I want to see a revival Amen. hit Patterson, Piedmont Sylvie, Greenville Amen. all over Wayne County and even spread further than that the only way that we can do that is for us Christian people to get back to this sound doctrine that Jesus Christ has laid out for us. And, uh, and uh, it don't take anything for us to get back into that. All we got to do is start reading his word and start at Matthew if you don't want to start in Genesis, start in Matthew, and I'm telling you, you'll be the Word of God will put a light in your eyes yes, and you yes. can see what it is, how it is He wants you to live. Amen. And I want to tell you, I'm praying that God will touch the hearts of people through this coronavirus, that the preachers that pastors churches and all churches are shut down right now they give this gives you a great privilege to really seek god and get close to him and get in the word and get back to where he once was god's got a walk that he wants us to walk he wants us to walk in the spirit, he says, if you walk in the spirit, you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. And I know that none of us do, but if we strive hard enough, we can. God made that possible that we can walk in the spirit 100% of Amen. the time. And I'm going to close now, and I just want to say, God bless this community around us and Amen. it's a privilege what time that we've been out of church to stand here and preach have brother dale and sister robin here and brother dale doing part of the preaching and all my church i miss them great man and i Amen. love them so much Amen. praise the lord